Hello, advanced geometry students. Um, just putting this video up here just for your uh, reference for later on. Uh, this is something we're going to talk about in class on the first day of chapter 7. Uh, but like I said, it's just here for your reference later on if you need to, to remind yourself of some things. So, a radical, that's just a square root. That's the fancy proper name. Um, to simplify radicals, I, you know, it's not a necessary thing, but many questions ask for it, and it's the proper way to write a number, is to simplify that radical. So to do that, what you're looking for, as it says, is the largest factor of the number you're taking the square root of that is a perfect square. So looking at um, the first example here, square root of 20. 20 is 4 times 5. 4 is a perfect square. It's the largest factor of 20 that is a perfect square. So with multiplication, and the same is going to be true with division, but um, with multiplication, if you're multiplying two numbers inside of a square root, you can separate it into individual square roots where it is still multiplication in between them. Square root of a perfect square is a nice clean integer. So square root of 4 is 2 times square root of 5. 5 is not a perfect square, and it doesn't have any factors that are perfect squares. And so this is the simplified version of the square root of 20. They are the exact same value. It's just cleaned up a little bit. It's the idea of just simplifying a fraction. All right, 4 over 8. It simplifies to 1 half. It's the better way to write it. It's a cleaner way to write it usually. All right, so this is what we want to do. So in this uh, second example, square root of 18, uh, just thinking about factors of 18, looking for perfect squares. 9 times 2 is 18. 9 is a perfect square. So square root of 9 times the square root of 2, which is 3. Square root 2. Simplified. All right. For the last example, square root of 120. Sometimes it's not an obvious uh, factor that is a perfect square. So what you can do is just look for factors. All right. Um, 120, I know 4 is a factor of that. It goes in there 30 times. So now just keep on breaking down your factors. Uh, factors of 30 that are perfect squares. Well, factors of 30 are just uh, 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 times 6. None of those are perfect squares. So it stays. There's lots of factors, but none of them are perfect squares, so it's not going to help us to do any of that. So square root of 4 times square root of 30 to square root 30. All right. That's how you simplify radicals. The other aspect of this is when, as we get going in Chapter 7, you're going to be dividing by some square roots of numbers. And so to do that, as it says, you are going to multiply the top and bottom uh, by the radical in the denominator. So in this first example, 5 divided by the square root of 3, what we are going to do is multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3. Okay, square root of 3 divided by square root of 3. Anytime you take a number and divide it by itself, it's 1. So what we're doing is just multiplying by 1. So we're not changing the value. Okay, we're just going to make it look different. So, when you multiply fractions, you go straight across. 5 times square root of 3 over the square root of 3 multiplied by the square root of 3. Uh, just off to the side. You could go in the other direction as what we did in the last slide. Uh, normally, we, what we did before was separate them into individual square roots. Now you can bring them back together. Square root of 3 times 3, which is 9. Square root of 9 is just 3. So when you multiply two square roots of the same number together, it just gets rid of the square root. Okay, and this is our answer. 5 divided by square root 3 is the exact same thing as 5 square root 3 divided by 3. Okay, looking at this next example, multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. So we get 8 square root 2 over 2. Now, 8 and 2 have some common factors, so cancel them out. Uh, 4 multiplied by the square root of 2. What we did here was 
4 times 2 times square root 2 divided by 2. Those factors of 2 canceled out, leaving us with that. And that's our answer. Okay, uh, this last example, we got a couple of ways we can do this one. First is just doing the same thing we just talked about. So square root 3 over square root 3, multiply by that. That gives us square root of uh, 6 times 3. I'm going to combine them into one square root over 3. All right, 6 square root of 3 is 18. Well, we just did the square root of 18 on this page. It's 3 square root 2 divided by 3. Those 3's cancel out. We just have square root of 2. That's our answer. Okay, the other way we could have done this, when you're taking the square root and dividing it by another square root, you can write them as the square root of a single fraction, 6 over 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so we got the square root of 2. Same answer. Different way to look at it. All right, that's the, the gist of multiplying and dividing with radicals, the square roots. Um, like I said, this is just here for your reference. I hope it helps. Have a good day.